The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. So last episode, we were working on the auto stand mechanism and it led to us redesigning the entire upper portion of the hot glue gun. So what we're gonna do today is basically continue working on the design. We bought some more glue guns so we can try to find out which heater barrel is the right length and then try to get this thing designed. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired Designs. Imhotep's priests. Regrettable acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. What's this, Karen? So originally when we started this project, I bought a bunch of hot glue guns and then a couple other tools that also had uh, hot melting elements in them. Yeah. And one of them was this Mod Podge gun, but I don't think we ever took it apart to really examine it or if we did, we just kind of set it aside. And last week when we were trying to, why are you constantly eating plastic? I'm just analyzing what's in it. This isn't standard ABS. Good. <laughs> well, I mean, when we would 3D print stuff before it would melt. Okay. And they're using something else for this. This is some sort of a, some sort of glass filled plastic. So you're thinking this one might be a, a good bet? Well, so I decided to take this apart and yeah. lo and behold, the heating elements and loader kind of tube are about the length I think we were looking for because we wanted a longer one, but yeah. it still needs to be short enough to receive the mini glue sticks. Because we tried the next size up of glue stick and the motor wasn't quite strong enough to push it, right? It's, it it's on the it was on the edge, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, that, the, here, I'll, this is what we were doing. This was the last revision, okay. and it's quite, quite a bit longer, but I mean, I don't know. I, I kind of like the mini glue sticks. I don't know why. It I, works. I do too. Because this thing is kind of meant to be more precision. You know, it's more about precision. Mm -hmm. So here is the barrel that we were using for a while for our tests. Mm -hmm. well, maybe it is the same size. Well, the silicon longer. is longer. Yeah. But if that means we can uh, put the motor further back. Yeah, I mean, what this tells us is that the actuation point, which in this case is like this um, kind of like a trigger. glue clutch or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that can be that far back, that means the motor could be that far back, mm -hmm. which would give us, you know, another, at least another inch. Now, the idea is we're trying to find a suitable heating element out of a glue gun. And then once we have that, then we're like, okay, well, that exists, which means we can probably find it for manufacture. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like for this one, they used a heating element similar to a regular glue gun. They just added on a plastic and silicone tubing as the guide. So that's probably yeah. the custom part because it matches the colors of the plastic of the casing. So. Well, I mean, the main thing this tells us is that we can actuate the glue gun or the glue that far back and still get enough pressure to push it. Well, I think mostly it just needs to be close enough that I can still grab a glue stick or that it's still guided through if you add another one. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this for the uh, actuation position? I think it's still going to be a little stubby for you, but... <sighs> yeah, because if you think about it, auto stand would be between here and here, unless it could be kind of over the trigger, but because before we were talking about all that stuff being out here. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, if, I mean, if the motor, if because the motor was on the side, if we put it here, that means it has to be built into the handle somewhat, which means we'll also have to redesign the handle, but mm -hmm. we'll cross that bridge once we cross this bridge. Well, the bridge. other option, hold on, do we have any mini glue sticks? Not these ones, but like regular minis. So if you think of it this way, if you got your glue stick, it's gonna be at least there and then we'll start pushing it in. So that's probably why it's there. But the question is, is do you wanna be able to just do one and then it just requires the length of two and just build a guide that'll allow that and then your actuation point can be back here. Oh, you mean further back? Yeah. Ah, I don't so think basically I... your tube would just be really long and you'd have one go in and then your second one, oh, you would just have to always have two glue sticks loaded. Well, you'd have to have, you know, compression around the glue stick because otherwise it's going to bend, you well, know? That's what the tube is for. Yeah, but this tube isn't very tight around the glue stick. It doesn't need to be, I don't think. Uh, I mean, even if it bends a little bit, it's not gonna be able to bend enough in there to cause any friction problems. So you're saying, in, instead of doing it like that, do mm -hmm. it more like this? Yeah. I'm saying add this on. And then we have this much space for the, I would probably just 3D print something for that. Yeah, I'm just to show you the, that's what I'm going for. So actually, we would have to distance. look at the 
length of the glue gun to make sure that you can at least get this one loaded after the other one? Well, yeah, I, I, mean? I think whatever we build, we should have a, a slope back here. So you know how a, a normal glue gun, a lot of times you put the glue gun in, it's kind of hanging like that. Mm -hmm. So I think like the sooner you can put something in, at least have it kind of laying there, the better. Mm -hmm because then it's ready to go. He's like, when, when these are too short, it's just like, it just kind of hangs off and then it falls. So I'm just saying, yeah, there'd be like a slope back here to like help hold the next glue stick. Mm -hmm. So you can, put a, you can put one in as soon as you want. Actually, I like this idea because it keeps the silicone uh, kind of more rigid. It can't flex very much. To be having the plastic tube on the outside? Yeah, yeah, well, because yeah. otherwise- Yeah, you don't like, want it to be just straight silicone. Well, most of the guns, that's how they work. So earlier we were talking about having the actuator be right under the barrel of the gun, like some sort of servo. But then that kind of takes away from the gun being a nice pointy thing that you can stick in anywhere. But the thing is, if you have the actuator for the auto stand up here, it adds bulk and then you lose the, um, the svelte pointiness of it. I wonder if there'd be a way to put the, put the actuator motor like back here, you know, like maybe the auto stand, if we do that bent rod version, it's just a really long bent rod that goes the length of the unit. It kind of look like this. So if we have like the, um, the nozzle's there, kind of looks like an aardvark snout. And then we'd have a barrel around it like that. And then the stand would be pretty small, be like that big, right? So then the side view would kind of look like this. The stand would be like that, and then it'd be really long, all the way back. And then when it extends, the stand would be like like that. So that when the gun is laying down, the stand is like that, and the trigger's here. Right? And then also if there's drips, when this thing retracts, it would catch the drips and move them out of the way. That'd be cool, even though they'd be kind of like hanging here like snot. But at least it's away from your work. But at least that way we get the mass of whatever actuates it, whatever motor actuates it, we get it away from here and pull it back here. But then we have other problems because of course we got the motor back there, the, the extrusion motor. Where do we put that motor? And it's still best to use a servo because that's what we have mapped out on the IO. I don't think we have enough room or I.O. to add another motor driver. Well, I mean, we probably could, but I'd prefer not to. All right, this is an overhead view of what I'm proposing for the auto stand. So we have a continuous rotation servo inside of the trigger guard area. So this pretty much represents this, right? Right, see, so the servo sits in here inside of this mass. And then we have the auto stand folds in here. Now, I also have to make sure this doesn't hit the trigger pivot point, but that's another, another thing to solve. So we have Continuous rotation servo, I'll laser cut a gear to fit onto it, and that will fit here. And then that gear will mesh with a rack. So this is a rack and pinion. The pinion is the part that rotates the gear. And then the rack is a linear set of teeth that intersect with the gear. So when the gear rotates, linear motion is created. And of course, we only have teeth on one side because, you know, <laughs> we can't mesh it on both sides because that wouldn't do anything. All right, so in a previous episode, I worked on this parametric extruder thing. And what it does is it allows us to, uh, you know, have some certain variables such as the width of the glue stick, the distance, all that. And uh, it will give us, you know, uh, it'll basically parametrically change everything for us. I was able to keep that part. The thing that I changed was I went back to having a uh, quarter inch glue stick, which is 0.2386 distance between the idler and the gear for compression. So from that, I began drawing other things. I uh, had the handle, which it was a pre-existing part, but now I'm redrawing it to kind of fit my design. I'm not gonna bother with the bottom, bottom of it just yet. I'm gonna work on this area. The drawing that I have kind of has this extended trigger guard that has a servo inside of it. So I drew the servo in profile and the top view, and it looks kind of like that in relation to everything else. So the thought is the servo will have a rack and pinion to extend and retract the auto stand right here, right above the trigger, just like my drawing. And then above that, here will be the hot end part of the gun. And that's pretty much all that will be up there. But by having both of these motors centered, it should give this gun a really nice 
center of gravity. And uh, once I figure out the gearing on the motor, then I can figure out the length of the auto stand, how far it goes out, how far it retracts. And then once I figure out how far it goes out, I can actually draw a line here such as this and then subtract that from the base of my gun to have a nice flat handle. So when you set the gun down with the auto stand, everything will be nice and flat. Um, we need to order in some of these sub-miniature micro servos, but I did find the drawing and I drew it as close as I could, uh, but I, I probably will need the real thing to figure out how to take the plastic gear on top of that, then attach another gear to that, and then have the gear mesh with the teeth on the auto stand, and then have it uh, go in and out. All right, I got the sub-micro continuous rotation servo in. I can just rotate it endlessly, so that's cool. I took one of the adapter pieces and I cut it down so we just have the two inner mounting points and these holes are 10 millimeters apart. So I'm going to draw this into the computer and now I can figure out where the gear goes. So I think what I'll probably do is laser cut a gear that goes underneath this in this gap right here and then I can screw into it and have the gear right there. So let's take a look at the computer. All right, there's my drawing. I've drawn the uh, servo adapter and I just called it that. So there's a servo adapter with the two holes. The uh, screw in the middle doesn't, isn't really relevant. So I'm going to make another sketch on top of this. Let's see, let's turn off that sketch. Look at the bottom, turn off the servo. Stand gear. All right, so this is a sketch made to the lower side of this face. I mean, I probably could have extruded down from the top sketch. I have adapter top right there, but the reason I did that was because I measured it off the base. So I'm like, okay, I know what this location is. So if I measure from there to the top of the adapter, I can get a measurement and then I can draw down from that and then have it meet up. And even though it's a little cheesy, I mean, sometimes I'll just zoom out the part on my screen and then hold up the item and then uh, it's a pretty quick way to see if you got it right. It's not perfect. I mean, it's better to print it out in paper and lay it down, but the most recent sketch that I did, I speculated that I can probably fit this within a 1.25 inch uh, diameter casing. So what I did was I started to extrude the trigger guard area. So that's one half of it. That's uh, 0.625 inches. See how it uh, bisects the servo. Uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do is figure out the diameter of the gear based off of this. So we have to have an outer wall for this, then the stand, then the gear. So let's uh, go back to the handle. So this is the part above the trigger, and this is the part parallel to the trigger. So I have this space in which to design my auto stand. That's all we have for today. So where are we at, Ben? All right, well, I spent most of this episode working on the rack and pinion automatic stand mechanism. Uh, so I have the two halves of the test case here. They're in black and white because I printed them with two different printers. Yeah, but we have the servo and it's a continuous rotation servo and it will make this travel uh, two inches, mm -hmm. which is longer than the original goal of 1.25. So yeah, it's just one more step into getting a final prototype that we can use for manufacturing consideration. Do you have any more ideas for our super glue gun builds? Do you see any major design flaws that we might have overlooked? Tell us about them on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. Here, here's my Ryan Gosling in Blade Runner 2049 impression. I don't know, Ben. I think you might be moving too fast. Oh, sorry. Halt. Freeze, replicant. You are the chosen one, Ryan Gosling. Oh my god, I found a horsey. I'm real. <laughs> we read about you in the notebook. Like, this motor could have a secondary gear which could actually move the stand. Oh, that probably wouldn't work. You could put, like, a, a gear of war in it. <laughs> Oh, that, yeah, that's true. Because in a, in a gun, the propulsion is the fact that it's a bullet. Yeah. Yeah, and then, you know. Yes, that's how bullets work. We just said that the <laughs> one stick at a time is fine. It's the Unobtainium SNES Mini Classic. Let's take it apart, 
see what's inside, talk about what we find, and also compare it to the Nest Mini from last year. Oh man, another HDMI cable. I don't need this in my life. Because Genesis does, Genesis does. What Nintendo don't, 